Hey VC, this is Tim with the University of Vinyl. I'm back today with another video in my continuing series highlighting different mastering engineers and some of the outstanding pressings that they're responsible for. Today, I have a guy who used to work at Ken Dunn Recorders. Ken Dunn Recorders was uh, based and uh, situated in Burbank, California. Uh, during the late 1970s and uh, the the main person who started Ken Dunn Recorders was a guy by the name of Kent Duncan. I do have a Kent Duncan, Ken Dunn Recorders episode out there in my playlist. Check it out if you have not seen that before. Uh, but one of the main mastering engineers that worked at Ken Dunn is a guy by the name of John Golden. And John Golden is a, one of the legendary mastering engineers. He's still going strong today. He has his own uh, mastering house, and I believe his son um, is also kind of learned the craft of mastering and is working alongside him now. Uh, but John Golden has a lot of great pressings, and uh, he also... Uh, in addition to Ken Dunn Recorders, he got his start, I believe, at Artisan Recorders. Uh, eventually uh, worked at K-Disc as well. So K-Disc was another boutique mastering, uh, mastering house in the Los Angeles area. So today I've got five albums that I recommend. They all sound fantastic. These are all first or second pressings. Um, John Golden... Uh, typically had a JG initial uh, in the dead wax, um, either next to Ken Dunn, uh, K-E-N-D-U-N, um, or K-Disc. In some cases, he has an, his. In some cases, his initials were not in the dead wax, uh, but he was credited um, in the credits uh, on the album. So let's get started with John Golden. <laughs> I forgot to mention John Golden uh, played a very important part in the early to mid 1980s, the whole punk movement. Um, he did a lot of mastering for SST, um, you know, the famous producer at SST. Uh, was Spot, and he worked alongside Spot quite a bit um, and tried to clean up those recordings as best as possible. The, the issue with a lot of the SST recordings, uh, you can listen to some Black Flag albums or Husker Du is another, um, kind of murky, um, not real dynamic as far as um, mids and, and, and in some cases not enough bass. So there were issues, but John Golden worked to present the best possible uh, case that he could working with the source material that he had. Uh, anyway, so that was just a little sideline. He had um, a lot to do um, with the mastering of punk albums uh, in the early to mid-1980s as well. In 1990, Neil Young decided to get back together with Crazy Horse and the resulting album that we got was the incredible Ragged Glory. This was uh, issued, of course, on the Reprise label. And that's a cover photo of, uh, of Neil Young's, one of many barns on his ranch just out of Woodside, California. I'm not sure if, uh, I don't think he's living there. I think he's actually, he's living with Daryl Hannah just outside of Telluride, Colorado these days. Um, but anyway, Ragged Glory, what a fantastic return to form for Neil Young and Crazy Horse. Of course, uh, we hadn't heard from Crazy Horse since, um, I think they were on that 1987 or 88 album uh, called Life. And that was just kind of a mediocre middling album. I don't think Crazy Horse played on all of those songs. And it's kind of a forgettable album. Um, but if we think about this incredible Ragged Glory album, um, there's that kind of alternative reprise label back in uh, 1990, that Aqua and Yellow. Um, 
you know, Neil Young had a huge return to form uh, in 1989 with Freedom. And Pancho um, from Crazy Horse, Pancho San Pedro, Pancho Frank San Pedro played on most of Freedom. And, um, of course, he's with Crazy Horse. Um, although no longer with Crazy Horse, apparently. He... Uh, one of the most incredible songs on this album is Love and Only Love. That's the 10 minute plus track on side two. Just a roller coaster ride um, with Neil, Neil's guitar. Uh, he's got Old Black, of course, all over this album. And the rock steady backbeat uh, of the rhythm section of Crazy Horse. Um, you know, one of the one of the endearing things about Crazy Horse is it feels like a song or a groove could fall apart in any moment, <laughs> but they manage to keep it together. And um, there's a shambolic nature to things, but when they get locked in on a groove, they're one of the most outstanding sounding. Um, emotional bands out there, and that is Crazy Horse with Neil Young. This pressing sounds fantastic. It, it is uh, a little pricey and not easy to find. Um, you know, 1990, we're, we're way into the CD years, and I'm not entirely positive how many copies of this were originally pressed. Um, you will see K-Disc in the Dead Wax. Um, and John Golden is actually credited in the uh, in the liner notes on the album. Um, I think Ragged Glory is slated for um, one of Neil's, you know, auto audiophile quality reissues. So if you can't find this, I would imagine um, probably Chris Bellman will take the original master tapes and work on those. And I'm sure that they would sound fantastic, but um, I will say that Chris Bellman probably has an easy job because this really sounds great. That is Neil Young and Crazy Horse, Ragged Glory, released in 1990. In 1981, the U.S. was taken by storm by that band from Down Under, Men at Work. It was the business as usual album that put Men at Work on the map in 81. Um, I recall seeing Men at Work with In Excess opening in the summer of 82, I believe. It was a fantastic concert. Uh, this is a K-Disc mastered version with JG for John Golden in the Dead Wax. Um, relatively easy to find. Um, this has got an incredible sound stage on it. It sounds fantastic. Um, that was on the Columbia label, that red label. And uh, these are pretty easy to find for between $10 and $15. Um, I guess Men at Work in 1981 could be classed as uh, a new wave band. And uh, I love Colin Hay. Uh, there are some great songs on this album, of course. Everybody remembers Who Can It Be Now. Um, my favorite track is on side two. And I think the song I'm thinking about is called Down by the Sea. Very, very dramatic, incredible, incredible lyrics. Um, there's a lot of saxophone on this album as well. I recall there being one of those uh, prototypical sax solos on, on Down by the Sea. Um, but this is a really emotional album as well. This is a good, good listen. Um, Men at Work, Business as Usual, mastered by John Golden at K-Disc.
I was flipping through TV last night, and um, there's this stupid TV series on... I'm not even sure what channel it was on. I, I caught 15 minutes of it. Um, and it's called, like, Breaking the Band. Um, you know, what, what happened with different bands. And um, last night was Journey. And uh, it kind of made me think back to, uh, you know, the whole drama involved with Steve Perry... Um, you know, your, uh, your, your tried and true original Journey fans are not really Steve Perry fans. Uh, they definitely are in the Greg Raleigh camp. Um, you can kind of count me there as well, although I love, love, love the Infinity album. Um, this is the, when was this? 1979, 78. And this is when they brought in Steve Perry to kind of augment Greg Raleigh on a few different songs. And they actually have a couple duets as well, which were huge hits. And I love the way these guys sounded together. The two standout songs on this album, in my opinion, are Lights and Feeling That Way. Uh, especially feeling that way. You've got that interplay between Greg Raleigh and Steve Perry. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, I personally would have loved to have seen Greg Raleigh stick around for a couple more, couple more albums. It didn't happen. Um, anyway, that is uh, Infinity. You're going to be looking for the Ken Dunn stamp in the Dead Wax. If you don't have Ken Dunn in the Dead Wax, these copies typically don't sound all that great. So you want to get Kendon and the mastering engineer on this, of course, was John Golden. Infinity, 1978 Journey. One of my favorite artists, of course, is John Hyatt. And he had an incredible string of albums starting in 1986, 87, um, all the way up until and beyond this album. This is Stolen Moments, the 1990 John Hyatt album, and uh, this is actually one of those Quiet X2 albums, so it is translucent if you hold that up to light, um, but relatively easy to find. John Hyatt, uh, what 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 can I say that I haven't already talked about on different videos about John Hyatt? Fantastic guitar player, fantastic songwriter extraordinaire, and. Um, you know, this was a very, very good follow-up album. Um, this has got Real Fine Love on it on, uh, on side one. Child of the Wild Blue Yonder was a bit of a rave-up song. And uh, Stolen Moments is uh, the title track. It's fantastic. John Hyatt is, a, is an emotional singer-songwriter. Um, Real Fine Love ranks up there as one of his stronger songs. And um, I'm real pleased uh, that I found this album, I don't know, about six months ago. And you can, you know, I'd be shocked if you're going to be paying more than $15 for, for this album, Out in the Wild. And it is, uh, it's on the a &M label. It has K-Disc stamped in the dead wax with uh, the initials JG for John Golden. That is uh, another fantastic sounding, there are several of them, uh, John Hyatt album. This is uh, Stolen Moments, 1990. You know, Jefferson Starship had an interesting run of albums in the 1970s going into the 1980s. I kind of hopped off the Jefferson Airship train when Mickey Thomas joined the band. Uh, they had that huge nuclear furniture album, but um, this is kind of the last in the line. I, I'm calling this Marty Ballon's last stand. Uh, this is Jefferson Starship Earth from 1978. And um, there's two incredible standout songs on this album. Uh, Marty Ballon, of course, is singing lead on those. Those are Count On Me and Run Away. Run, run, run away. Um, 
I really loved Marty Ballin. I was sad, you know, he passed away two or three years ago now. And he has a really good early 1980s solo album that's easy to find as well. It was all over FM radio. Uh, the, the songs, <laughs> the, the couple standout songs on that album are escaping me right now. Um, but Count On Me is a fantastic song. Later period, Jefferson Starship, before they kind of morphed into that MTV age uh, with Mickey Thomas. And, of course, you know, Grace Slick uh, was still involved. Paul Kantner was still involved at this point in time. There are a couple songs where you almost get that previous airplane glory feeling. Um, there's, um, what is it, All Night Long, I think, was maybe one of those songs. Um, Fire is an interesting song that was actually co-written by Marty Ballin. That's uh, track one on side one. The copy you want to find... For the best fidelity, great soundstage, um, has got Kendon in the Dead Wax, K-E-N-D-U-N for Kendon Recorders. And right after that are the initials J-G for John Golden. Sorry I'm getting a little bit of glare here today on this, but uh, that is Earth Jefferson Starship 1978. I'm calling it the last... The last victory lap for uh, for Marty Ballin with Jefferson Starship. That's a wrap. That is a video today highlighting five fantastic albums and great sounding pressings um, by the mastering engineer John Golden. John Golden, look him up on Discogs or All Music uh, or even maybe Wikipedia. Um, he is responsible for a ton of great sounding albums. There were some others that I featured already on my Kendon Recorders video, so I didn't want to do any repeats today. That is it. If you have not checked out the merchandise that I am now offering to help support the channel, I'm going to drop a link in the description below. And um, stop on by, pick up yourself a ceramic coffee mug, maybe a t-shirt. Um, and uh, any support is greatly appreciated. Please like and or subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Again, um, a lot of the YouTube people, we don't like to sound like broken records, but... The more likes and subscriptions that we get, the better it is for more people finding our channel. It helps with that very, very mysterious YouTube algorithm. Maybe we should do a video about the YouTube algorithm. No, let's not. No. Take care, everybody. I will see you very soon. Bye.